uh, video that I'm uh, going to do about uh, this Netgear uh, ProSafe uh, S3300-52X. Uh, these ports right here are uh, 10 gig RJ45 ports and then these are uh, SFP Plus ports. They're 10 gig too. And I got uh, 10 gig SFP um, Plus adapters for fiber. Uh, I'm going to be replacing this Dell switch here, uh, which is a, I can't see, uh, I forget the model number, but it's like a, it's kind of hard to see there, it's too dark, it's a 5448 switch it looks like, too dark, sorry about the lighting, uh, but this Dell switch here, um, I don't know how to do VLANs on it, I can't get into the network management on it. So that 10 gig SFP plus module is going to replace the ones that I have in this one. These are only 1 gig. So I'm just going to reuse the same short fiber patch cable. It'll do 10 gig. Um, I just got to change the SFP plus adapters on either end. Here's my other one. I got two of them. These were like 15 bucks a piece on Amazon. And then, as you can see, I have some Noctua 40 mil fan. I think these are 40 mil. Yeah, 40 mil uh, fans to replace the fans that are in the side there. Because those things sound like a jet engine. But all these uh, RJ45 ports here, these are all 1 gig ports. Um, and then it has the two 10 gig ports and then two uh, SFP Plus ports, which are also 10 gig. So it's got four 10 gig ports and then the rest are 1 gig. Unlike this Dell switch... All these ports here are 1 gig, including those SFP. Those are just SFP um, ports, so they're not 10 gig. And it connects down here to my 10 gig switch. So I'm going to plug this in here, and I'll show you what it sounds like when I plug it in. i got a small battery backup down here. So when I plug it in, you'll... I don't know if you can hear that. sounds like a dang jet engine and it does eventually get quiet once it puts up the number here it'll have like a one I'm not sure what the status number is um, but I'll show um, the inside of this here in a minute and I'll show you the two fans and I'll show you what these look like I don't know if you can hear me over those stupid fans it's kind of loud let me unplug it and then I also got some rack ears here because when I bought it off eBay, it didn't come with any rack ears, so I had to buy these rack ears for $10 off of eBay. They just screw into those four ports. Came with rack studs, and then the screws for the rack ears. But here in a minute, I'll show you, I already got the screws out of this. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside here. I'll show you the, these two fans, and I'll show you what these look like. And then uh, once I get the fans in, um, I'll show you how to configure VLANs on these ports because I'm going to do a trunk port with the SFP Plus module and then I'm going to set up VLANs on a certain number of these ports for my uh, IoT devices, Internet of Things devices. Um, and then the rest of these will either be off or not used. But um, I got this too so I could configure VLANs um, because that Dell switch over there I can't figure out the management for it. I think you need a special cable. It's Dell. It's like Cisco stuff. You know, it's it's if you don't know if you're not you know extremely smart or uh, have been working with it forever, it's hard to figure out. Uh, so this Netgear stuff is a little bit more user friendly, even though this is an enterprise switch. Um, but you can find these off of eBay. But anyways, give me a minute and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside here. All right, this is what the inside of the switch looks like here and these are all heat sinks right here obviously i'm not sure what exactly these are you guys i'm sure will tell me in the comments uh that's the power supply back there it's unplugged um but here's the new noctua fan and this is the existing fan that was in here and as you heard these things sound like jet engines and <clears throat> here's one that i took out it's got the regular you know uh nitro or nero ultra flow 
and then it's got the blades there on the back and then these Noctua are just 12 volt you know they're smaller they probably don't move as much air um, but I ain't done be working the switch that hard. I only got a couple ports open on it. I just want it so when I plug in something to a wall jack, it'll turn on the jack. Because I'm not using all 48 <laughs> of these ports for home use. I just got it so I can plug into any jack and get internet. Um, but these are just held in with two screws here. I did two screws. And if you look here, the old ones are smaller. And then the fans come with thicker ones. So you have to use the ones the fans come with. And then these are Craftsman screwdrivers I use. Um, I got my initials in that one. That's what that is. Um, but this is a, the new Craftsman and this is the old Craftsman. Uh, the new Craftsman is probably made in China like everything else. Um, but these tips weren't magnetized. So what I did was I bought this Klein Tools uh, magnetizer. You run it through here and it will magnetize the end of the screwdrivers. So that way when you take it and it will pick up the screw for you. And then that way you don't have to worry about dropping your screw. But, and then these other holes are to demagnetize it. So you can magnetize it and demagnetize it. Um, but if you want a good screwdriver and you don't want to pay 60 bucks for Linus's, you can just get a regular Craftsman one from uh, Lowe's, I think it is now that sells them. Uh, but I'm going to change out this other fan. And then these uh, headers, the old headers, are just a standard uh, computer header you know standard four pen computer header and oops sorry if I can camera work and then the you know Noctua just plugs into the same port and I'm just gonna let them roll and see uh see if I get a uh fan there yeah a fan light here because if you do you have a fault with your fan I'll tell you if one of the fans is out but I'm uh replace this one and then I'll, I'll plug it back in and see what she sounds like and then take this cover off you just take off this screw and then there's one screw right here and then I think there's yeah there's one screw right here on the other side so one screw right here one screw right here and one in the back and then that cover just pops off so it ain't too hard to take that cover off um, but I'll get this other fan switched, I'll plug it in, and I'll show you guys what it sounds like. And then after that, I'll show you how to configure the VLANs for all these, or for, you know, ports. So you can set up a trunk port and then uh, set up your VLANs. Um, but yeah, I'll show you that here in a minute. I got these uh, new fans here plugged up, and I just plugged in the switch, and as you can see, they're spinning. And I don't know if you can hear it, but they're whisper quiet. And the switch is starting up right now. I just gotta wait for that number to turn on. But these are way quieter, and I can already feel back here the air that they're that they're moving. Uh, it is way it is a world difference. So if you get a noisy switch, buy these Noctua uh, fans here. Uh, I, f I forget the model NF A four X twenty PWM. These things are awesome. I think they were like. 15 bucks a piece i mean it wasn't too bad 30 dollars to make this thing quiet and i'm gonna pitch those fans in the trash because i don't need them uh, but they give you a bunch of extra stuff with these fan kits like headers and uh you have a bunch of stuff with them but all i needed was the screws and these thicker screws came with the fans so i'm gonna put this lid back on and then i'll get plugged into the switch and i'll show you the interface and what ip address to go to to get uh this configured and as you can see, it popped up a one. Ooh, I got a fan light, but I think that's, it's not red, so uh, I'm going to call it good. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was like that before or not, or if it just had power. I'll have to look that up, but uh, I'll show you guys the uh, interface, how to set up the VLANs on these ports. All right, guys, I got the switch mounted in my rack down here next to me. And I'm going to show you guys uh, how to set up uh, VLANs on the switch. Um, as you can see here, that I'm in my PFSense uh, router you know, uh, interface. And uh, I learned how to set up these VLANs from uh, Lawrence Technology Services. He has a great YouTube video. So uh, if you want to learn how to set up VLANs and PFSense, go to Lawrence Technology Systems. He's got a great YouTube channel. Uh, it, he's got a lot of good content on there. 
Um, but for mine, I have VLAN 100 and VLAN 101. Um, 101's my camera VLAN, 100 is my IoT VLAN, uh, Internet of Things. Um, now the switch, the, the default IP address is like two zero dot two hundred or something. You can Google search it, but as soon as you plug the switch into your router, your router is then give it an IP address, and that's how you get into the switch. So in PFSense, you click on status, uh, DHCP leases, and then in my case, my switch is it's on my main network. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, there it is. 192.168.4.201. And it says it's offline, but it's actually online. Uh, you just have to figure out, you know, which one is the newest IP address. You know, look at all your IP addresses, plug in the switch, and see which one's new. So I'm going to open another tab. 192.168.4.201. Hit enter. <coughs> and the default password for the switch is password. Um, but as soon as you log in, I think it may prompt you to change it, but if it doesn't, go ahead and change it. So I've made my super secret password here. And this is the main interface of the switch when you log in. Um, and the way you set up VLANs, um, actually, actually, is you click on switching. But before I get to that, my thermal, as you can see, is 65 in the morning, uh, 67, or the max temp is 67. So those fans are quieter, but you're going to run higher temps. But like I said, I ain't going to stress this thing. Uh, but anyways, to um, set up the VLANs, you click on switching. And then up top, and then click on VLAN. And then this is how you add the VLANs, whatever. Like in PFSense, you go to firewall, or sorry, interface, assignments, VLANs. I have 100 and 101. So as you can see, I've already added them here, 100 and 101. The way you add them is, click up there, type in your VLAN, you know, let's say it's 55. You type in your, you know, what you call it, IOT2, you know, whatever you want to name it. And then you hit add up there in the top left or top right. And then once you add these, you click on advanced. And then you go to VLAN membership. And then uh, the default VLAN is one that's just your main, you know, default one. So you hit this drop down, click on the VLAN you want to configure. In my case, the first one's 100. Well, you need to set up untagged and tagged um, ports. Untagged is your device and tagged is going to your router. Um, it's also called your trunk port. So 52 is my SFP plus going to my 10 gig switch. So that's my trunk port. It has all my VLANs on it. And then this 39 is going to my smart TV up here next to me. Uh, that's the one that I wanted to, <clears throat> to have VLAN 100. So the way you choose one of these ports to set up VLANs is you click it. You just hit click it again for untagged. And now if I hit apply, I'll go ahead and do this. You hit apply. It'll reload, and you're like, all right, cool. Port 33 should be should be VLAN um, 100. Nope, it, it's not that easy. You gotta do one more step. You gotta click on Port PV PVID configuration. That's a mouthful. And then what port did we just do? Short term memory loss. <laughs> uh, we did Port 33. So you click on PVT configuration go down here to port 33 you click on it and then see how it says um up top here is one pvd id when you change that to 100 because we want it to be vlan 100 you hit apply it reloads and then now if we look port 33 is now in vlan 100 so if we go back to vlan membership click on 100 Port 33, still on tag, you know, nothing changed, everything's the same. You got your trunk port, and then you got your going, you know, the trunk port going to your router, and then you got these ports here that are going to your devices. So if I open up CMD, right now I'm plugged into my main network on the switch. You type in IP config. Right now I have 192.168.4.203. That's my main network. 
but if I plug into port 33 it was, let me plug it in. All right, we're plugged into port 33. Let's gotta wait for this globe to set up here in the bottom right. You can actually see it here, identifying under network interfaces, it's identified. Type in IP config again. We now have a IP range of 192.168.100.21. All right, now that you nice. got the port set up with the VLAN that you want, you gotta make sure that they can't talk to each other, you know, talk to um, other networks. Uh, like my main network can't talk to this IoT uh, network, Internet of Things. And in PFSense, you can set up firewall rules to make sure they can't talk to each other. So to test it out, I'm going to go to my Unraid server's IP, which is 192.168.4.4. And as you can see, it's not loading. It's timing out. So that means I'm on, you know, the firewall rules are working. I can't access my server. It's just going to sit here and time out. Um, and Lawrence Technology Systems has a bunch of videos on YouTube about how to set that up. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty straightforward to uh, configure VLAN. I yeah, see it timed out, sorry. Uh, but to configure VLANs here on your switch. And as you can see, I can't even talk to the switch anymore because it's on 192.168.4.201. Because I hit system and it's not loading. So I can't see the switch anymore because my firewall rules have blocked it. But if I move back to my other main network, yep, see it timed out. But if I move back to my main network here, wait for it to identify. Come on. All right. So if I click on system, uh, I probably have to log back in. 192.168.4.201. Yep, log back in, and now you can access your switch again, switching, VLAN, and then advanced, VLAN membership, and there's all your VLANs. You can also click on VLAN status, and you can see the different ports that you got set up for your VLAN, like 52 and 52, since those are the same for 100 and 101, that's my truck trunk port is 52. And then, of course, the main default one has everything. You know, VLAN 1 default it has everything. Um, but anyways, uh, I just thought there wasn't a whole lot of videos on, about the Swatch on YouTube about how to configure VLANs. And I uh, wanted to mess around with it. I got it off eBay for a good, pretty good price, and it's got 10 gig ports. Uh, but I hope you guys like and subscribe, and uh, have a good one.